what's up guys well i really blew it um you know not keeping up with the boston calendar not knowing that the hebrew hammer was uh fighting last weekend missed out on the gold mine that was um eve ulysses man i just watched the eve ulysses uh Claggett fight, Steve Claggett fight. Eve <laughs> um, Ulysses lost his fight on a split decision. Um, let me tell you, man, Eve Ulysses is an undefeated fighter, man. He didn't lose that fight, he got screwed in that fight. Um, I scored that fight 192. Best I could give Steve Claggett was two even rounds, man. There were some close rounds, but uh, the close ones uh, I pretty much ultimately gave to uh, Ulysses, uh, except for two even rounds, man. You know, now if you look at the close rounds, if if you get if you gave them the Claggett, if you gave Claggett the even rounds, maybe it would be a little bit closer fight. But to me, this fight really was not close at all, man. Uh, I thought uh, Eve Ulysses. He did really whatever he wanted to do. Um, you know, really, he could not fight on the back foot too much because they were fighting in one of the smallest rings. It has to be the smallest ring allowed in boxing, man. You know, a, a very small ring. I, I don't know where this fight took place. Let me see if um, if that information is on his uh, box rig. Um, Some place called uh, Place Bell Laval. Not sure what that is, but it is, it is, uh, it looks like a club. It is very small. Not a big venue at all. You know. Um, I'm not seeing much info on it. But, uh, you know, uh, Eve Ulysses, man, look, uh, he, he stayed in the pocket with this guy. He walked this guy down. Uh, you know, one of my big takeaways for uh, Eve Ulysses, man, is this guy is very intelligent with his punches, man. He knows when to punch and he knows where to punch. You know, he knows when to go upstairs, downstairs, and he knows where exactly to throw. You know, uh, you know, throw that in with his, uh, you know, his uh, his good movement. And, uh, you know, this, this guy, is he's really good, man. All right. So let me give you my breakdown of the fight. All right, and by the way, um, I'm I'm assuming he's managed by Eye Tiger Management, because their name was on the ropes in this fight, and of course they, uh, you know, were the management company, uh, uh one of them behind the event with uh Lemieux and Saunders. Um, if you have a talent like this, why are you putting him, you know, a mover like this? Why why is he in such a small ring? You know, I don't really understand that. Uh, yeah, I know maybe you know, it couldn't be helped, you know, but this, but a guy like this benefits from that, from that much bigger ring that he fought, uh, the Ibrahim ring, man. All right. Round one, uh, 10, nine Ulysses close round, but Ulysses appeared to land more and have better defense. So let me, I'm going to put, I'm going to put, uh, a star on my notes just for, the ones that maybe could have been a toss up, maybe could gave to Claggett. All right, round two, ten nine, Ulysses, clear round for Ulysses, landed flush shots throughout the round. Round three, ten nine, Ulysses, phone booth round that Ulysses clearly wins. Round four, ten ten, okay, I'm gonna put a star by that one. All right, Ulysses led first half and Claggett came on after landing numerous flush shots. Ulysses began to come on again at the end of round. Round could have been scored either way or a draw. Alright. Round 5, uh, another 10-10. That was a punch for punch round. So I'm going to put another star by that one. Alright. Round 6, 10-9 Ulysses. Landed several flush head shots. Also landed a combo at the beginning of round. Round 7, 10-9 Ulysses. Claggett had moments early, but Ulysses landed 
the hardest shot of the round, and he landed more clean shots. All right. I thought that was clearly a Ulysses round, but I'm going to put a star by that just in case. All right. So I have uh, four stars at this point. All right. Round 8, 10, 9, Ulysses landed flush upstairs twice, worked the body, stayed in the pocket, and walked Clagg down. Clagg landed flush on Ulysses right before Bill. To me, that was the only thing that he did in that in that round. He did he landed, uh, a, I think that probably his most flush shot of the fight, uh, right right I mean right before the bell, it kind of kind of pushed uh, Ulysses' head back. All right, round nine, ten, nine. Ulysses Claggett kept it close, but Ulysses outworked him in the pocket. Um. Okay, let's see. I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll put a star there just in case. All right. Round 10, 10, 9, Ulysses fought him tough in the pocket, landed more in the pocket, walked him down. All right. So let's see. I have one, two, three, four, five, maybe five rounds you could give the guy, you know, uh, but I did not. So, you know, uh, at best, at absolute best, Clagg could have got a draw. But him winning the fight, absolutely not, man. Absolutely not. You know, um, the uh, the commentators, they only gave him going into the 12th round. They only had Clagg win two rounds, man. They only had the guy win two rounds. Um, you know, and uh, that's it. Uh, the official scores... Uh, these, these two people need to be kicked out of boxing. Uh, Sylvain LeBlanc scored at 97-93 for, uh, Steve Claggett. And Kevin Morgan scored at 97-93 for Steve Claggett. You know, I don't know how. I, I have, I have no idea how. What, what was that? They gave the guy, uh, what was that? Seven rounds or so? You know? Absolutely not, man. Absolutely not. Hell, it's a it's a stretch trying to give the guy five rounds for a draw, you know. So, I completely dis disagree with those scorecards, man. Tony Lundy scored it for uh, Eve Ulysses ninety six ninety four, so he had him winning what only uh what one one round I believe. Um, uh, yeah, cause otherwise it, it would have been a draw. So I guess he had him winning uh six four, while the the other guys had um. Uh, uh, Claggett winning 7-3, it appears. Whew. Don't get it, man. Don't get it. Two terrible scorecards, man. I tell you, if you listen, you be an undefeated fighter, man. Uh, and I, I checked the odds for the fight, uh, you know, to see if it was a heist. Uh, if you listen, opened as a minus 585 favorite. You know, he was a, he was a pretty sizable favorite over this guy. Steve Claggett was a plus 385 underdog. And if I am remembering correctly, I think when the fight went off, Steve Claggett uh, was a plus 350 underdog. So there was not a huge amount of money that came in on Claggett. There was a little bit, but nothing, uh, you know, that made the made the earth spin, you know. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I can't really call it a big time heist from that point of view because the line did not move that much. Uh, it moved a little. Uh, you know, so could there have been some foul play as far as that goes? Who knows? But uh, I, I always check the odds to see how the lines move, man, in these kind of situations. But I don't think there's no way in hell this guy should have got a decision in this fight, man. Um, so I have I pulled up uh, Eve Ulysses uh, box rick, all right. Uh, for some reason, he went down a spot in, in the in Box Rick's uh, world rankings. He's now he's number fifteen instead of fourteen in the world at one forty. All right. Now I looked at the uh, top guys. Uh, I'm I'm only top twenty page of one forty um, on Box Rick. All right. Um, hell, they 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 have Mike Garcia as number one. Um, 
as the, the number one 140 pounder. Even though what it wasn't his only 140 fight against Adrian Broner. And he is still a lightweight champion. All right. Now, out of the names that I saw for Eve Ulysses to, that he could potentially fight, there would be interesting fights for him. Uh, Adrian Broner is a, you know, that's potential. Uh, Ed, uh, Edward uh, Troyanovsky out of Russia, the guy who got knocked out in the first round by Julius Ndongo. I think he could be a possibility. Um, he, uh, he, I was, I was kind of uh, leery on him because, uh, uh, let's be blunt about it, he is a Russian who uh, I did not see listed as body clean by the program enrolled. But I saw somewhere that he is enrolled in 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 some in one of the. Um, Sanctioned bodies, I believe it, it might be, it might be the um, WBC. I, I can't, I cannot remember. Um, or that he that he is ranked, uh, and sh and should be uh subjected to testing. Um, and if he is, then uh yeah, then then that would be you know that would be a potential opponent, if if he is indeed subject to random year round testing. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, I I would not put him in with Felix Diaz. Uh, that's 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 a tough outing for anybody, um, except for Terrence Crawford. All right. Um, but this was the name that got my attention the most. If I was matchmaking for um, uh, Eve Ulysses, if I was managing his career, um, and if I could pick his next opponent. Person who I would put him in with next, who just had a fight. I mean, what day before uh, his last fight it was John Molina Jr. Man, I would try to make that fight. I would try to make that fight. Uh, John Molina just had an impressive win, an impressive knockout on a FS1. Uh, he is 34 years old. He uh, he is 30 and seven at this point with 24 KOs. So there is. The uh, knockout threat. Uh, he is bigger than Eve Ulysses at uh, five ten and a half. Uh, Ulysses is, uh, I think, listed as five seven. Yes, uh, he's five seven, and uh, I'm not sure what his uh, reach is, but John Molina has a seventy one inch reach. All right, but uh, yeah, and, and John Molina is uh, Vada Clean about the program and role. So, I think uh, I think this would be uh, potentially a good matchup, even though he is, you know, a bigger guy, a taller guy. I don't know about the reach, but uh, you know, that was a time when I definitely thought John Molina was on the uh, on the downside. He surprised me with his win over Provodnikov. I, 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 I hell, everybody thought he was going to lose that fight. He was a big underdog in that fight. Uh, he was not looking good against Broner. Uh, you know, he lost to Humberto Soto. Uh, he didn't look good in that fight. He lost to, uh, Lucas Matisse. He got stopped in that fight, you know. Uh, so, you know, John Molina was having his, you know, his, his ups and downs in his career, man. But, um, uh, you know, you want to see, you want to see where the guy is, man. You know, put him in with this, with this veteran, man. You know, a tough guy, a bigger guy. Uh, you know, with with Eve Ulysses skill, man. You know, we saw what you know what Terrence Crawford did. You know, constantly backing up in the fight against guys. He came forward, pressuring them, trying to get a knockout. You know. Uh, you know, let's see exactly where Eve Ulysses' boxing skill is, man. You know, I I I think this would be a good guy for him to get in with. All right. Um, but if not, like I said, man, maybe, um, maybe Troy Nofsky, man. Um, but hell, you gotta, you gotta be sure he, he is getting tested. <laughs> you know, he, uh, this guy, this guy's got 24 KOs and 27 wins, man. 86% KO percentage, you know, uh, he is, uh, he's five eights, so only one inch taller than, uh, Eve Ulysses, man. And hell no, I, I would not send Eve Ulysses to uh, Russia. 
you know, uh, if, you know, if HBO wants to put that card on, maybe we could do a, a neutral ground fight in the States. Uh, you know, if, uh, Troy Nasuki did not want to go to Canada. So, but yeah, but I would only put him in unless, you know, this guy has to be doing some form of, um, uh, random year round testing, man. I'm going to see if I can pull up, um, uh, the WBC's rankings right now. I want to see. I, I I thought I saw him ranked on the uh, WBC's uh, in the rankings. So let me see if I can pull that up. Let's see. I tell you these uh, ratings. Here we go. These, these boxing sites could be a little bit better organized. All right, let's see. Um, super lightweight. No, he's not on the WBC. He must be on. Um, he must be in the WBA's top five. Yeah, let me go. Let me go check their rankings. That must. That must be where I saw the guy. Let's see. Yes. Yes, Edward Troynovsky is. Uh, he has to be in the fair boxing program because he is ranked number three by the WBA. He's ranked number three by the WBA, so he, uh, yeah, he has to, uh, he has to be in the fair boxing program to uh, to have that ranking. So, you know, so that's good. So Vada, he is subjected to random year-round drug testing. All right, and that's that that's good. It's good enough for me. All right. Uh, so, uh, and I I did not see Eve Ulysses uh ranked anywhere. In the four major sanctioned bodies, uh, I, I do not even see this guy's uh, name in the top 15, uh, which I, I definitely think he should be in the top 15 on somebody's. So, yeah, he I, I would like to see him, uh, you know, against a notable, recognizable name next. You know, John Molina, um, Troy Novsky, a former world champion. Uh, let's see, uh, who else, as I said, um, uh, how I doubt he would get a, you know, in an Adrian Broner fight, okay, and Victor Postal, uh, is, is huge, uh, you know, definitely not gonna try to throw him in there with, with him, so, yeah, so if, if I'm managing, uh, his career, man, number one, John Molina, number two, uh, Troy Anofsky, you know, maybe, maybe a toss-up, because, if he gets in with Troy Novsky and I'll box this guy, I'll slick this guy, then, um, you know, that's a huge win over a former world champion, man. It, but the fight would have to be on uh, either in Canada or on neutral ground in the States. Not not in Russia. We're not going to Russia. Hell no. All right. So that's it, man. I would try to leave uh, the link uh, for the fight in case you want to watch the fight yourself. But uh, if you listen, man, if I had... If I had been keeping up man if i knew that Abraham was fighting and if i would have looked it, into this guy and if i would have saw this fight man you know i'm positive i would have played him against the hebrew hammer man especially at a plus 250 man you know uh if you listen man this guy should be 16 and old man he should be 16 and old. he should be an undefeated fighter max Kellum said during telecast talking about that if you listen uh was a a considered a good prospect before the uh Claggett loss which then shortly after he said that was kind of uh you know it was kind of controversial uh man there's no way Claggett won this fight man no way you know I, I just don't see it man you listen landed the, uh the more flush shots as I said man he walked the guy down he he couldn't he couldn't fight on the back foot too much because there wasn't a whole lot of room in, in the ring to move but uh, even when he did, he did that okay, uh, even though it was not a lot. The fight mostly was fought uh, in the pocket. Uh, you know, he walked the guy down. Uh, you know, even up close, he knows when and where to throw, man. 
you know, he went to the body, to the head. I mean, the guy has great boxing mind, man. You know, athleticism, skill, um, intelligence. You know, this guy, um, you know, this this guy uh, should be, uh, you know, when it comes to, to wagering fights, man, picking winners. You know, this guy should have a star by his name, man. This guy's good, good talent. You know, very good talent, man. Uh, so that's it. I can't wait to see more from this guy, see what happens with him in, in the future. I'm definitely interested in his career. And uh, you guys can let me know what you think, man. And uh, I'll be checking in with you guys soon, man. Thanks for watching.